Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. It's an early one today because I have to move some things around, but I worked on this all last night. And the real question is, uh, people are confused about what is coming down the pike and how can AI make everything bigger? And what is the impact on some of our favorite stocks like Tesla and Nvidia and Google, et cetera? I wanna put things in perspective as to exactly what's going on in the world and why it is quite outrageous. This one's called How Big is the Pie and How Big Can the Pie Grow? And is it going to help everybody as we go forward? So let's jump in. First of all, the inspiration for this, uh, which did cause quite a bit of confusion out there in the marketplace. Elon Musk said, it is not a transfer of wealth, this whole AI revolution. The pie will get much bigger, the opposite of a zero-sum game. And a lot of people were kind of tripped up a bit by that and exactly what it means. So I'm going to try to break it down. And part of the inspiration for this also is a meeting that Jensen Wang had with the BG2 podcast, which was fascinating. Now, this comes from Brad Gerstner. He talks about how GDP, global GDP, GDP per capita on the planet was basically flat for hundreds and hundreds of years. And then the Industrial Revolution started to kick in. And then we started to see massive growth of GDP per capita around the world. But we ain't seen nothing yet. That is what's super exciting about this time we're about to go through. GDP per capita is set to quadruple over the next 100 years. Okay, It is wild, absolutely wild, and uh, so much more to come. And how is that possible? Well, we'll try to break that down. First of all, when scaling... Uh, of AI came out first, there were kind of base models that answered kind of static questions, etc. And then the second phase was the post-training reinforcement learning. You know that now if you use AI, it'll remember what you asked in the past and you can drill down deeper. And these feedback loops improve the accuracy of the AI and interaction and real world learning, which is nuts. Now, the thing that I'm most excited about is this world of inference. And Jensen Wang once again said in inference will be a thousand times bigger than training. But now he said it's going to be a hundred thousand times bigger than training. And that is what is very exciting about companies like Tesla, which I'll get to in a second as well. Now, AI agents, people hear about them. Well, what exactly are they doing? Well, <laughs> it's kind of wild. So AI is shifting from a one shot response to, again, simple questions, MLLs, multiple multiple language models, retrievals, end modalities, maybe create a text or an image or some audio. But now these agents will be doing much better reasoning, much better decision-making, greatly improving AI quality and versatility. And the rise of these will bring about a substantial increase in computational resources needed to power these advanced AI models. But at the same time as well, they're going to make everything much better. So people people talk about you know hiring ten PhDs for I don't know four million dollars versus having one AI or a thousand AIs for literally a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. That's the big difference. But they can add so much more to your business. And uh, even Elon Musk says. AI is likely either to be the best or worst thing to happen to humanity. The potential is massive, and we need to be ready for that. Now, when it comes to the flywheel, another very important aspect, user adoption is growing like crazy. When people say it's a bubble, it's not. It is doubling and redoubling every couple of months. Okay, everybody now relies on AI technologies. The adoption of AI technologies has been faster than anything in the history of the planet. And compute per user is also rising exponentially. And because there's increased complexity in AI reasoning, AI querying, multitasking capabilities, and everything else. Moto89, thank you so much. But together, these two exponential multi multiplied crazy demand okay for the resources and this is where things get nutty because the demand is so high it creates a flywheel event a flywheel effect not just for gpu chips but for everything around that like electricity uh, build outs staff etc and this compounding effect creates a huge reinforcing cycle that touches 
pretty much every industry. And this is why I'm going to get to the crux of why the pie gets a lot bigger as well. Now, I'm not going to spend much time on this, but one part of the elements of the build out is CPUs. Then kind of think of Intel used to run the data center with all their CPUs. They're dead. Legacy CPUs are obsolete. They cannot handle AI workloads. And a simple little chart here is is simple reason as to why. GPUs excel at multi-threading, but CPUs can't do that as well. And the main difference is between a CPU and GPU design lie in the architecture and function. CPUs are built to handle key specific tasks sequentially but they can't think at the same time. When you, when you have things like GPUs, you could have five AI experts all thinking about the same thing differently, but at the same time. And that's why the CPU is dead, and that's why all the data centers that exist need to be refreshed, and that creates a huge amount of wealth as well. The other thing that is very concerning for people is the power bottleneck. Um, when you consider the amount that these things chew up, you know, you saw all the, the doomers saying, well, it's going to boil the ocean, kind of like Bitcoin mining uh, fear and FUD happened back in the day. But if you look at the efficiency of the optimization of algorithms that run across these chips over the past 10 years, these LLMs have improved 100,000 times in 10 years in terms of efficiency and how much energy they use. And that is said to continue, maybe not at the same scale, but definitely there will be a lot more performance per joule of energy sucked in. Now, when it comes to build outs, a lot of these names you will know Azure, which is Microsoft investing a ton of money. You've got Oracle Cloud investing a ton of money. Core Weave that, is, that pivoted from crypto mining to you know, high performance compute, investing a ton of money. And OpenAI Open Stargate, they said they would spend $400 billion. And NVIDIA just put $100 billion into them so they can spend $100 billion on NVIDIA chips. The build out is massive like that's nothing we've ever seen before in the history of this earth which is completely wild but there's one player that's building out even faster which is wilder this is the biggest hyperscaler build out ever a lot of other companies talk about doing it these guys have done it this is colossus 2 from xai and the irony of this too by the way is elon's grandfather was part of the uk intelligence during world war ii helping the Allied forces defeat, I won't mention because people get triggered, but that's what went on. That machine that broke the Enigma code was called Colossus 2. So it's no coincidence that this is called Colossus 2 as well, <laughs> but it's far, far bigger. And uh, Elon tweeted this yesterday, uh, 23 hours ago, in fact, they were planning 1.2 gigawatts. And people's like, what the hell does that mean? Is that big? 1.2 doesn't sound very big. 1.21, well, that is way bigger than anything else ever built on the planet. To put things in perspective, I measured all the exaflops for all the different systems out there in the world. And this chart is a little bit of an eye chart. But if you look carefully, uh, you will see the exaflop sizes. You've got Colossus 2, which is from XAI, which is part of the Musk Industries, 20,000 exaflops. The next biggest one is the Meta AI cluster, 400 exaflops. Microsoft OpenAI, Goodyear project, 400 exaflops. Oracle H200 stack, 260 exaflops. Google TPU pod, they've got their own GPU called a TPU, 200 exaflops. People always say, oh, Google's going to smoke XAI. They can't. They're too far behind. Amazon, Tranium, 150. Tesla Dojo, 100. Okay? And this doesn't even include Colossus 1, 2, which was about a fifth of the size of this. Uh, Alibaba Panda, 80 exaflops. Tencent, 70 exaflops. ByteDance, 60 exaflops. It is wild how big these things are. But there's one player that has it all. Remember, it's all about... He or she who has the most compute basically wins. They're so far ahead. Now, back to NVIDIA. Jensen said yesterday, give me the order and I will get it to you. People thought there would be a constraint on chips. But he also said the problem that people had in the past was they were underestimating how many GPUs they need. 
But if you give him the order, he can get it to you within a year. So a lot of people are just buying like crazy. And people think NVIDIA is a bubble. No, it's not, because all these other players need to catch up, okay? First mover advantage was key for Colossus 2. Now, let's get into exactly how things grow stuff over time. This is going to be a, kind of a, an important aspect to what I'm trying to get at today. Uh, first of all, AI is rapidly evolving, again, beyond LLMs, okay? It's going to do so much more workloads around the world are moving from GP CPUs to GPUs. And there's also a sovereign demand from nation states, especially out of the Middle East and China, Asia. And enterprise adoption is also through the roof. All the top enterprises, whether on Wall Street or manufacturing, et cetera, are all embracing AI to automate routine work and enhance decisions. And that is happening at a very, very fast scale. Now let's get into this next chart. This is how AI Pi grows GDP. And it's uh, an interesting one. So human intelligence, okay? When you imagine global, global GDP is about $90 trillion. 50 trillion of, of global GDP is generated by humans. 30 to 40 trillion generated by other stuff. But Jensen Wang believes it could easily add another 10 trillion in economic output, significantly expanding productivity. An example of that is my simple example, a robot taxi. You buy a robot taxi for $15,000 and it generates you 50,000 per year. One time purchase of 15 grand and it makes you 50K a year. That's an example of how GDP grows and AI will add 10 trillion to the 50 trillion of human output because it significantly expands productivity. And if you imagine a 50% gross margin, AI infrastructure requires about 5 trillion per year in investment to sustain this growth. That all that money, most of it goes to Nvidia as well. And then the current AI infrastructure is about 400 billion annually. And that's got to grow five times to 2 trillion annually. And also remember tokens is all about the tokens. Tokens represent AI computations equating thoughts from humans that generate value. And this will just all become that huge flywheel which creates a ton of value. And the other thing as well that we care about as investors, what's gonna to happen to these stocks? Well, Nvidia will go up two and a half X, Tesla will 10 X and OpenAI will two X. OpenAI is currently valued about 500 billion. Uh, so it's easily going to go to a trillion dollars. XAI is better than OpenAI. It should be worth two trillion in my mind, but the valuation is much lower. Hopefully Tesla can buy a piece of XAI. Don't forget to vote if you are a shareholder. Um, but Tesla will 10x very clearly based on the actual compensation plan. It is completely wild, the future we have ahead of us. But remember, AI will add 20% to GDP everybody will get richer. But just in case the wealth is not evenly distributed, make sure you have exposure to these assets. And I'm gonna talk about inference as well, because I covered this at the very beginning on, I think it was slide five. Let's go back to slide five on how AI has changed. This is too important. The world is inference. Inference is gonna be 100,000 times larger than anything we've seen before from LLMs. 105,000, let me jump forward here again. Find out where I am. Tesla has the ability through AI5, AI6, even hardware four to run inference out of cars, which could create a huge amount of not just cloud inference, but also edge inference. If they can connect their vehicles to Starlink, then the edge inference would be able to handle very low latency computational demands. And this is wild. And the amount that it could add could be 100 gigawatts of AI inference compute in a very short amount of time, within one or two years. Tesla are thinking about this, they're very quiet about it, but that when your cars are not, when they're idling or charging, whatever, they can become inference engines and there'll be a massive demand for this in the future too. It's one of the many reasons I'm super excited about Tesla. Not only could you use your car as a robot taxi, but when it's idling, you can generate revenue from inference as well. You have your own little data center in your garage sitting there and don't forget as well this is important it goes back to the beginning 
piece of how the pie grows for everybody. You can see here a couple of things. AI generates new ideas. The adoption is going through the roof. The more collaboration there is, the more output increases and the more society benefits. Now, I am very worried about those nation states that are lagging behind in AI, but hopefully they realize they need to catch up. It's going to be absolutely critical, you know, in terms of national security for nation states to have the best AI. And the US government just signed a deal with XAI. So every US government official now has access to the best AI on the planet. And this cooperation helps grow the AI pie rather than divide it. And the key thing that Jensen Wang also said in this interview yesterday, which took me aback, is Intel spent 20 years trying to kill NVIDIA, okay? And all of a sudden, NVIDIA invests five billion in Intel to cooperate. The point of this is one plus one equals five. Synergy, cooperation grows the pie even faster. It's better because the pie is so huge, there's no point in trying to kill your competition. Work with them. Everybody can win here. Intelligence is not zero sum. More AI means more value for everybody. It, the world and the paradigm has shifted completely. And again, AI agents deliver continuous intelligence solutions to real world problems. If you have an accountant that needs to run payroll, you may not need that anymore. Your AI agents can do it for you, can monitor people's overtime, make sure there's no fraud, make sure it's within the boundaries of what's normal. The performance per watt will keep growing. The machines get better and better, kicking out way more tokens per joule of energy. And all industries are accelerating, all industries. There is no industry that is not embracing AI. And again, Elon Musk, AI is likely to be the best thing to happen to humanity. Fingers crossed it doesn't take over. And the robots are coming, my friends. They are, Elon said uh, on the All In pod, we are finalizing the design of Optimus version 3. This really is going to be a very remarkable robot. He does not exaggerate, okay? It will have essentially the manual dexterity of a human meaning a very complex hand and an AI mind that can do everything a human that can do and more. Brian, good morning to you too. It's early this morning. And finally, meme du jour, <laughs> Sam Altman from Doge Designer. I won't read it, but if da 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 was an Olympic sport, he'd have all these medals. The point is, Sam Altman is working with firms like CoreWeave to run compute. They're basically renting machines for double the price that Elon Musk can have them and they have limited capacity and scale. I don't believe anybody can catch XAI. I really don't. Um, and the more they are in operation, the quicker they will win. American Beijingers, thank you for coming, my friend, and everybody out here. That was a quick one today, but it's so important. Again, AI is the biggest revolution to ever hit mankind in the history of the world. Thank you all for coming. Have a great day.